I am so glad that you're here with us tonight. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, something that I'm sharing tonight, um, <laughs> I've been having to deal with some of these things too. So, uh, you know, Darren said it um, well a, a week or two away. Um, you know, when he stands in this pulpit, he's, he's anointed to minister the gospel. That's, that's the call of God that's on his life. That's the anointing that's on his life. But when he steps out of the pulpit, he's a Christian just like every single one of you are. And he's got to live it just like you've got to live it. When that anointing lifts, then it's like we walk by faith. And we've just got to do what the scripture says and, and what we know to do and keep moving forward and staying faithful to the call and the plan of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hallel just don't go far, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, as a pastor um, and a pastor's wife, I think one of my greatest desires is to see believers really walk in God's best, to see them produce harvest in their lives, and to see them walk out the plan that God has for them. Amen? But sadly, throughout the years, I've had an opportunity to see many that have fainted along the way, many that have just quit, or probably even more so, more that have struggled to produce healthy results in their life. You know what I mean? It's like, you're, you're, listen, you're, you're getting there, you're moving along, but it's like, it's just a struggle. And it's just it's a struggle to see things produced in your life. And oftentimes, the culprit can be traced back to little foxes. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight are the little foxes that can slip in, the little foxes that can weasel their way in and really cause great damage and harm and, and, and impact the course of your life if they're not dealt with quickly and efficiently. Amen? There is a garden on the inside of you. The plan of God has been deposited on the inside of you. The seed of the word of God has been deposited on the inside of you. But you've got to know and you've got to be aware that there is an enemy that is ruthless and he is relentless. And his whole mission is to, is to pluck out that seed, to rip that from the inside of you so that you don't produce, that it's not able to blossom and to, and to mature and to really see something fruitful produced in your life. Amen? Song of Solomon not a, a passage we go to often, but Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes, the little foxes that are ruining the vineyards while our vineyards are in blossom. This is a scripture that the Lord gave to me the other day, and I've heard it preached so many times, but it's the little foxes that will slow you down. It's the little foxes that will nip at your feet. And it just grabbed hold of me, and I really began to study this out. And in the scripture, we have a vineyard, and the vineyard has one purpose, and it's to produce fruit. It's to produce grapes. But in this passage, the grapes were not fully ripened. They were not fully mature. They were still growing. They were still, they, they, they needed more time on that, on um, that stem to be able to, to come to fruition. They were still blossoming. And the scripture says that little foxes entered the vineyard and attempts to destroy all hopes of fruit ever being produced. See, in the natural, foxes are sly, they're subtle, they're sneaky, they also like to roam around at night. But in spiritual terms, they're fruit killers. They want to destroy any and all fruit in your life before it is fully bloomed. They want to destroy your harvest. They want to keep you from receiving and walking in your healing. They want to steal joy. They want to steal your peace. They want to steal love from your life, and they do so quite subtly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking, he says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The word advantage here in the Greek, it means to outwit, to trick, to take advantage of someone through some sinister or sneaky means. So really what it's saying here is the enemy. It says the enemy's motivation what the enemy is attempting to do is to outwit, 
to trick, to take advantage of someone through some sneaky or sinister means. See, he's sneaky. He's sly. He doesn't play fair. If, 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 if you thought, why, why? He doesn't play fair. Don't be surprised when he hits you with a low blow. Don't be surprised when he hits you when you're down, you know, and then does a one-two punch. Don't be surprised at that. You know, he's not going to go, oh, we'll get back up before I punch you again. No. When you're down, he's going to punch you a couple more times. So we cannot be ignorant to his devices. I like this. Here's another way to read this verse. This is, this is from Rick Renner, and he says, if you switch it around, though, this is what you can come up with. Since... We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. He does not take advantage of us. I like that. Since we are not ignorant of Satan's advantages or devices, excuse me, he does not take advantage of us. So we got to be wise. We got to understand that there is an enemy that he's seeking to steal the seed that's been planted on the inside of you. He's seeking to, to steal the plan of God that, that, that has been placed on the inside of you. And one way that we do that is staying connected to the Spirit. I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit will lead you. He will guide you. He will open your eyes so that you can recognize little devices that he'll use against you. And I was thinking about this today because everybody's kind of affected differently. And, 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 and something that may work against Carrie may not work against me. Or something that may work against me may not work against Miss Karen. So we've all got our, you know, little things that, man, if he just, if he reaches in there and, and, and digs a little bit, it'll get to us. But see, if we're connected, if we stay connected, if we stay connected to our Father, if we're connected to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is able to open our eyes so that we are absolutely aware of, uh, 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 that's a little fox that's trying to get in there. Don't give in to that. Do not give in to that. Don't give place to that. Don't, don't, uh, don't come back. Don't rebuttal. Don't give it another thought. Just let it go and keep moving forward. See, he'll do that for us. But we've got to deal with those things quickly. And really dealing with things quickly, that's the key. That is the key. My walkway at my house, I've got a, um, it's, it's filled with like pebbles or rocks, and I've probably got hundreds, maybe thousands of little, little pebbles that, are, that fill the walkway. And it's amazing how quickly little weeds will come up in between those pebbles if I do not consciously get down on my hands and knees and pull those little weeds up by the root. We were gone all last week in Oklahoma, and one of the th first things that Darren noticed when we arrived home, it was late Friday night, and we got out, and he's like, oh, my goodness. He's like, look at all these weeds that have popped up in the rocks. We were gone for one week. One week we left my pebbled uh, walkway unattended, and it only took one week for that walkway to become filled with weeds. It doesn't take long. It's easy to ignore those little things. Ah, if they were huge things, you wouldn't be able to ignore them, you know? You'd have to face them head on. Think about it. It's usually when somebody gets a, um, a bad enough report from the doctor that all of a sudden they have a lifestyle change. Why do I still not eat healthy or not exercise like I should? And why? Because I'm just okay right now. I can deal with, you know, it's, it's, there's, nothing, there's nothing major going on, you know? If anything, it's minor. There's nothing major going on. So we overlook a lot of those things. Say you'll eat the fried food, you'll drink your soda until you have a big, a big enough scare, and then you're forced to make a change. But why not before then? Because it's not a big deal. Because you can manage it when it's something minor. Eh, it's just a few weeds in the walkway. Eh, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big walkway. It's hardly noticeable. But if you don't w deal with the minor, it turns into the major. And how quickly it can turn into the major. If you don't pluck those weeds out of that walkway before too long, there will be more weeds than there will be rocks. And I know for a fact that that's true. How about little thoughts that creep in? Mm, 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 mm. If you don't take captive little thoughts, they will become big problems quickly. Well, they did that on purpose. You don't deserve that. I'd be happier moving on. Or it'd be easier to just quit. If you grab hold of one of those thoughts and you allow that thought to run through your mind unchecked, it will take you down a very dangerous path. 
How many of you, from one thought that would left, was left unchecked, you created a whole feature uh, movie in your head, you know? A two-hour and 20-minute movie you have created in your head over one thought that was left unchecked. I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> it has happened to me shamefully and sadly. It has happened. Why? Because we just allowed that little thought to give in. We didn't nip it in the bud. We didn't lasso it. We didn't take it captive, and we allowed it to run rampant in our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. If you don't, and I really, I think about it like lassoing, you know, onto those thoughts, and if you don't pull them in and restrain them and bring it back in, it will take you down. You know, it's like I can see you going on this winding path, and it's like you've got all these signs here, and it's like caution, caution, bridge out, road out, danger, danger. You know, do not do not continue down path. And what do you do? It's like it's Thelma and Louise, just pedal to the metal, and you just fly off the cliff because you allow those thoughts to remain unchecked. It is a big deal what you chew on, what you meditate on. Because those thoughts, they can turn into rehearsing, replaying, magnifying a situation, and they'll get you out of peace, they'll get you out of jo joy, and out of faith. And you cannot receive anything when you are out of faith. And if you're not walking in love, well, Scripture says that faith works by love. Listen to me. Not dealing with hurt feelings will turn into offense and bitterness. And it will turn into it quicker than you'd like to realize. And offense and bitterness will block up the flow of God's goodness in your life. And again, your faith will not, it cannot work apart from love. So if you're believing God, but you've got offense and you've got a bitter, bitterness, you've got this blockage going up. And there's no point in praying until you've made things right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24, it says, so if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. God places a high priority on walking in love. Now, I don't like necessarily hearing that. Some people, they just they were born and they just love, 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 love. It just that's just them. That's that's just like their nature. And then others of us, you know, we became born again, and then the love of God was shed abroad in our heart. But we really got to work it, you know, like pulling it out. <laughs> Sometimes, can I get a witness? But it's not always easy to walk in love, especially with those you're closest to, especially family, especially natural family and what about spiritual family? Sometimes it's even tougher there. But if you're going to keep your fruit blooming, which is the only way you're going to produce a harvest, you've got to let that love flow. Amen? I shared this story many years ago, but um, I was in college, and um, one of my friends, we had grown up together, and I don't even remember what she did. I'm glad. I, I forgave and forgot. But she did something, and at the time, I mean, it just hurt deeply. I mean, it just it hit deep. And I was really hurt about it. And then after a while, that hurt kind of turned into unforgiveness. And then that unforgiveness turned into anger and bitterness and defense. And I had this major blockage going on. And I remember driving to Lake City one day, and I was listening to WOLR, our Christian station, which is powerful because, thank God, I was meditating on the right thing at the right time. And I was listening to the radio station, and there was a preacher on. And whether he said it in jest or whether he was being serious about it, he said, if you have unforgiveness towards somebody or somebody has hurt you, you need to bake them a cake. <laughs> and as soon as he said it, I mean, it like, it hit me on the inside, and I just began to cry. And I'm like, i got to bake this girl a cake. <laughs> And so I, ca I came straight home, and I, I knew what kind of cake was her favorite. And, I, and the whole time I'm making her cake, and I'm just bawling, and I'm squalling, and I'm making this cake. But as I'm bawling and I'm squalling, it was like the hurt, the unforgiveness, the offense, that whole blockage, it just began 
to melt away by that step of faith that I was taking. And I remember going to her house, and I don't even know if she knew that she had hurt me. She probably didn't. And I knocked on the door, and she came to the door, and I smiled, and I said, I baked you a cake. <laughs> and that's all I said. I didn't say, you hurt me, you offended me, I forgive you. I didn't say any of that. I just said, I baked you a cake. And I remember us walking into her house that day and us having cake together. Amen? You know, Mark Hankins said something powerful, whether it was in this meeting or I've just heard him say before. He said, um, the only way to change a feeling or an emotion is by a step of action. You know, if you're waiting for you to feel like doing whatever it is, to waiting to feel like I'm going to walk in love or feel like I'm going to step out and fulfill the plan of God for my life or feel like exercising, whatever it may be, it's not going to happen. But what can change a feeling, what can change your emotion is a step, an action. Amen? So if you want to change feelings, you need to take a step. I told Darren um, today, the last couple days, and, and we've shared this before, but Smith Wigglesworth, a powerful man of God, um, documented 24 people he raised for the dead. Um, just, I mean, a mighty man of faith. And he said that he started every single day by jumping out of the bed, and for 10 to 12 minutes, he would just high-speed dance and jump around and shout and give glory to God. And, um, and, you know, I've done a little bit of that here and, here and there in my life, but just the last couple of days, Darren will take the kids to school, and I have just purposely just jumped out, and I have just been beginning to lift my voice, and I begin to dance, and I begin to shout and just tell God how good he is. You know, how, how, uh, how thankful I am for his goodness, for his mercy, for his love. And there, I'm tell, there has been something that has changed as I've been. That's for somebody in here because I wasn't going to share that. Some of you, you, you really struggle getting your day going or you just, you, you need to do that. You need to just step out by faith, and, and I didn't feel like it when I started, but, it's, but I'm telling you by like that five, that six minute mark, I'm like, glory to God, glory to God. I'm like really high stepping, and then I'm looking out my window to make sure Darren's, you know, not coming through the drive through because I don't want him seeing me, you know, making sure that my neighbors can't hear me. But man, man, oh man, it'll change your day. It'll change your countenance. Hallelujah. It'll change the way you perceive things too. Amen. Amen. Offense and bitterness, they have no place in a believer. No place. Grudges, anger towards someone, it's never, it's never okay. Oh, but you don't know what they did. I don't have to know what they did. I know what the Word says. John chapter 13, 34 and 35, this passage of Scripture has been rocking my world this week, and I just keep reading over it and meditating on it. Um, and it's just so good. It says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love, this is the verse, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. This verse states right here the way that the world is going to know that you and I are Christians is our love for other believers, for those in the body of Christ. That's powerful. The way the world is going to know that we are Christians, that we are followers of Christ, is by our love for other believers, those in the body of Christ. Why is it the ones that it's hardest to love many times are those that we're called to, those we do life with? It's no wonder the enemy attempts to keep you separated from those you were called to, that you were supposed to do life with. There should not be hurt, offense, or bitterness, unforgiveness among believers. There should not be. There should not be hurt, offense, or unforgiveness among believers. But, you know, I can't tell you how many good people who love God that I've seen since I was a little girl, and they've left, they've left offended, they've left hurt, they've left bitter, they left with unforgiveness in their hearts, and I'm not saying that in some of those cases, maybe they couldn't say, well, my hurt was justified. But what I am saying is they allowed those little foxes to come in and to pull up their roots and to uproot them and really to do damage to the fruit that was being produced in their lives, that was maturing in their lives. Is walking in love a big deal? 
Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> it's true in your marriage, too. If you don't eradicate those foxes, woo, they will wreak havoc. And it's funny because every problem Darren and I have ever had in our marriage, it was never big things. It was always little things. But see, if you don't deal with the little things, they will become big things. And they'll turn into big things quickly if you don't deal with them. If you hold unforgiveness towards your spouse... Or you allow yourself to become easily offended, which is so easy to do in a marriage. I don't know why, but it is. You're giving those little foxes an inroad into your marriage. You cannot give him place there. It's the little things that will impact you. It's the little things that will get you off track. I think we're so programmed to be able to handle the bigger things. We can tackle the bigger things. But see, it's the little decisions. It's the little thoughts. It's the little actions on a day-to-day -day basis. And they will turn into a snowball at the top of a hill. And it, as it begins to go down, it's like it gains momentum, it gains speed, and it adds girth and width to it if you do not deal with those things quickly. A ship, I was thinking uh, about a ship, and, you know, they map their, their courses out, and they, you know, whatever degrees that they're supposed to be going. And if a ship slightly deviates, I'm talking a minuscule deviation, just minute, it, at first it doesn't look like much at all. But after a while, you will be so far, that ship will be so far from its intended destination that it will not even know where it has ended up. And that really is the point there. Where do you want to end up? What do you want to produce? Spiritually speaking, those little foxes, they will keep you from walking in God's best. They'll keep you from walking out the plan that God has for you. Listen, the plan of God is there. It, it, it's, it's not changed. It's there when you were here. It's there when you're here. It's there when you get back there again. It's, it's there all the way up. But what will hinder the plan of God coming to pass in our life is when we allow those little foxes, those little fat foxes to keep nipping, to keep nipping. We have a dog um, river in our house, and I really don't like the dog at all, <laughs> at all. And <laughs> I think Bella's been having a difficult time with the dog. Let's see. They were up at from 4 to 7 this morning. Darren and Bella were. At 5 the other morning, Bella was up. And I, uh, I came down, and she's laying on the couch. And I said, Bella, get ready for school. And she just starts bawling and heaving. And she's like, I can't go. I'm getting no sleep. This dog. <laughs> so she has to sleep in for first period because this dog is just running rampant. But but, but River, <laughs> God bless this dog, but River likes to, to get into paper towels and it'll just make a big mess. And somehow there was a paper towel out in our, in our backyard and she had gotten a hold of it. And so I was running after River trying to get it from her. And I am running around like a mad person trying to catch this dog. It's like I'm all over the place. And maybe that's not a great analogy because it wasn't the dog coming after me, but still, it had me in a hot mess, and I, it, was, it messed up my whole day, that dog, that dog, but anyways, uh, yeah, there you go, what are those little foxes that are trying to enter your vineyard, think about it, what are the little foxes that have been trying to enter your vineyard, maybe it's fear, maybe it's self-doubt, what about unforgiveness, offense, hurt, anger, how about discouragement, that's a huge one, and I've really, the last couple weeks, this has been trying to just weasel its way in. And it's like it'll start to weasel its way in, and I'll start feeling down and depressed and sorry for myself. And then all of a sudden I have to snap out of it and go, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, like, I'm like, nope, I cast that down. I cast that vain imagination, you know, and I'll just begin speaking the word, or I'll get a song in my heart, and I'll just move on. But, man, it's subtle. It is subtle. Well, they don't like you. They don't appreciate you. You know, you're not celebrated here. You're only tolerated here. It'll just go on and on and on. You got to nip that stuff in the bud. How about complacency? You know, sometimes that'll weasel its way in. And it's like you're just struggling to, to move forward in God's plan. How about distractions? That's a big one. Are you too busy? Or maybe you're so worn out because you're so busy. 
And distractions are just that. They're distractions that distract you from really fulfilling the purpose that you were intended to walk in. Get out of that rut. The Lord began dealing with me at the end of last year before this year began, and, and I knew it, and, and it wasn't anything new, but he kind of grabbed hold of me, and he's like, you're too busy, and you need to become more disciplined with your time. And so I have been purposefully um, managing my week and, and, and day to day so that I do not give myself to things that they seem like emergencies at the time. They're always urgent. You know, everything's always urgent. It's, it's high priority. Got to do this. Got to got to answer this text right at this moment. Got to answer this phone call right, th- right at this moment. Got to run here or there. But I've been purposely managing my day so first things are first. Because, see, if I neglect the call that's on my life, if I neglect the purpose of why I'm here, I'm going to miss the boat. See, you only have one life to live here on the earth. And what you do here, it essentially will impact eternity. Don't get so busy that you miss the main point. Don't get so busy that you're not connected to your father. Because when this isn't flowing, all this out here, it gets a muddled mess. When you find that maybe you're struggling with your love walk or joy or peace or whatever, you better check. Is this okay? Is this good? Because if this is not good, I'm telling you, all this out here, it's, it's not going to mean a hill of beans. First things first. First things first. It won't matter how clean you kept your house, and I like a clean house, but it won't matter in eternity how clean you kept your house. It won't matter in eternity how many boxes you were able to check off on your to-do list, and I'm the queen of to-do lists. It makes me feel accomplished. But in the grand scheme of things, in eternity, those things won't matter. But what will matter is, did you do what the Lord called you to do? Did you do what the Lord impressed upon you to do? Did you make things right when you knew you should have? Did you let things go that weren't really a huge deal but would have turned into a huge deal if you hadn't have let it go? Did you fight through the complacency? Did you keep moving forward in the plan of God even when it was difficult, even when others quit, even when you didn't want to show up, you kept showing up? I want you to bow your heads, please. Travis, wherever he's at, he can come on back up. Hallelujah. 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 I want to give the Lord time to minister to you and to maybe show you where you need to tighten up in some certain areas or maybe there's something urgent that you need to deal with and and you need to make right. And most times we don't have to search too hard. We know. I mean, as you know, probably as soon as I started talking and saying something like, yeah, I know. I know I got to deal with that. I know the Lord's already been ministering to me. Let me tell you, this is the time to make it right. Don't prolong it. What has God been speaking to you about? What have you put off? What have you allowed to run rampant in your life unchecked? Because let me say this, you can become numb after a while if things are not dealt with quickly. And that's a dangerous place to be. What once was urgent, what once seemed high on the priority list, it doesn't seem to be as big of a deal anymore. Deal with things quickly. Make things right with people quickly. And your marriage, make things right quickly. And sometimes the thing to do is not to rehash over and over and over a situation. The right thing at times may be to just let it go and move forward. That's a word for somebody there. Stay on top of those weeds. Be on the lookout for the little foxes. It's those little foxes that will spoil the fruit. And it's the little foxes that will keep you from your assignment. See, we all have an assignment here on earth. We all have something that we're called to do. I said at the beginning, you're a garden, and the plan of God has been placed there. And it's precious, and it's valuable And as you're connected with your heavenly father, because that's priority number one, 
And as you're connected with your heavenly Father, you'll discover that purpose. You'll discover that plan. You don't have to go looking for it. I hear people all the time, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What's? Don't worry about that. Don't overcomplicate things. Just spend time with your Father. And everything will flow from there. As you spend time with Him, there may be a time there's a scratching or a nudging on the inside of you and go, you need to, you need to help in that area. Or, or you, you need to open up a business here. Or, or you need to, there's not this in our community. You need to make that happen. But you don't go looking for it. You discover it. You discover it. And as you're flowing in love and joy and peace and that there's no bitterness, there's no unforgiveness, there's none of that junk that's clogging up the supply, you'll be able to hear straight from heaven and you'll be able to do exactly what he's telling you to do. Hallelujah. They're going to sing this next song and um, two things I want to do. I know there's some people here and, and you just need prayer for healing. You just need hands laid on you, prayer of agreement, and we're going to do that. That's what we do as a body. We're here for one another. We lift one another up. We pray. We encourage. We speak life. We speak the word, and we're going to do that. But I know there's other people here, and you just you need to make some things right. And, and I encourage you maybe to come to the altar and to kneel down and do that. Or you can you can do it in your seat. It doesn't matter. But I want you to take this time, and you may need to just be quiet for a few minutes and allow the Lord to just shine some light on some areas. There may be some things that you're not aware of. There may be some things that you've been ignorant of, of, of the devil's devices. He, he may be raking you over the coals right now. And you've not even realized that in this little area over here is where you've allowed him to come in. But I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to shine light on those areas. And you're going to see. And you're going to be able to make some adjustments. You're going to be able to close that gate so that you can walk in peace. You can walk in joy. You can walk in love. You can walk in God's best for your life. You should live a victorious life single day. Doesn't mean attacks won't come. Doesn't mean things won't come against you. But see, you'll rise above. You'll recognize those things. And you'll say, not today. I'm not giving in. I'm putting a stop over there. And I'm rising above because you are an overcomer. You're above and not beneath. Hallelujah. You've been seated in heavenly places with the King of Kings. Hallelujah. So take your place. Take your place. You have dominion and authority. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you a few moments just to make some things right. And those who you want some prayer, whether it's for healing or for whatever it else may be, you can come on down here for that too.
now. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the world. Our hearts adore. Jesus, we love you.
happy. Just lift your hands. Father, we just love you. Right? Oh, we adore you, Father. Everybody sing that chorus with me. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one that has a goal. Jesus, we I didn't minister long, but I share what the Lord had, I believe, for you tonight. And uh, sometimes it's just those little things, you know? Like we want to overlook the little things and get to the big things, but if we don't take care of the little things, it'll it'll really, it'll, it'll harm us. It's not beneficial to us. So I guarantee the rest of this week, on into next week, you will have many opportunities You'll have many opportunities to go, no, 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 I'm not letting you in, thoughts, I'm taking you captive, you know, I'm, I'm that feeling, I'm not going to be um, moved or swayed or driven by my emotions and by my feelings, amen, I'm going to be swayed by the Word of God, the Word of God is going to dictate my life and not some feeling that is just fleeting, that's here one day and it's gone the next moment, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We praise you. Father, I just thank you for each and every lady here tonight. And I just believe that the word was sown into good ground. And Father, I just believe that you've illuminated. You've illuminated areas that, that maybe they need to, to deal with. And, and Father, in the days and the weeks to come, I just pray that this message will come back to their remembrance. And they'll be able to make adjustments quickly. They'll be able to make adjustments quickly. In your name we pray. Amen.